we met again with Nancy Myers Katzis in Something's Gotta Give. And I remember on the set, I would listen to his stories about being raised in a beauty parlor surrounded by women in rollers. And he listened to mine. And we played around with the idea of forming a salon where we would gather kind of like-minded people to discuss topics of the day. I don't know, Jack and I still meet every month or so uh, for lunch in his California ranch house up in the hills there. Um, but I'll tell you something, a few years ago Jack did something that was really generous for me. It was really unexpected, very generous. And I wrote him a little note of gratitude and this is what I wrote. And by the way, these sentiments remain the same. I've been thinking about you and friendship and here's what it means to me. It means from down here at the bottom of the hill to way up there at the top of the mountain, I'll be watching your back. I am going to be looking out for you. You just need to think of me as your Palisades rep, your gal Friday on the west side. <laughs> Unlike me, you are not a person who resides in the world of right and wrong. You are not bound by moral platitudes. Your authenticity has been earned by the choices you've made. These choices show on your face. Your face, your great face, challenges standardization. Looking at you for as long as I have has made it easy for me to come to the conclusion that your face is the best face I've ever seen. Aww. Aww. Not only because you're pretty, and you are pretty, Jack, but mainly because over the years, your face has morphed into something negative. I believe at the heart of this magnificence, one would not find the bad boy genius actor who has dazzled us, but the good man. You may not like hearing this, but you are a good man. So in spite of all your fame and your talent and your wealth and temptation, <laughs> yeah, you are a good man. You are my good man. And, I, and even though words like good and decent have come to kind of represent, you know, sappy Hallmark cards, they mean absolutely everything to me, especially now that I'm older. So based on accumulated evidence collected over years of watching both of us rise and stumble and fall and then get up again, you remain a friend. So as we plow headfirst in the so-called golden years, I continue to think, rethink, and re-rethink you. My interest in you will never decline, and as the years go by, like I said before, I'll be watching your back, and might I add, I'm loving you from down here. I do love him. So, Catherine and I had to get home. This is our day, right? This day is shaping up. It's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> I love being in New York. It was so fantastic in the fall here. Before winter, I know you had a bad one. And I'm glad I wasn't here for that. <laughs> anyway, Catherine had to go home and I had a few hours to kill. So I took a chance and I called Woody. And he was about to leave for France to, um, to make a movie, something he's done virtually every single year since 1965. I, it's true. It's unbelievable. It's actually a miracle. I asked him if he wanted to take a walk on Madison Avenue, just like we used to. So we started at 70th Street. We didn't hold hands like in the old days, but I swear he wore what must have been one of his beige bucket hats from Annie Hall. <laughs> Not attractive. <laughs> I was in my typical Diane gear, my Marnie dress, over black long sleeve turtleneck, leggings, frog boots, a big fat cross dangling around my neck, and the requisite wide brim black hat. We looked in the store starting with Ralph Lauren Complex on 72nd. He passed the Whitney. We took in the people. They took in us as well. They, uh, they took us in as well. And at one point, Woody looked over at me with a really long gaze. Really long. And he mentioned this. He said to me that I had the kind of beauty that required a beekeeper's hat. <laughs> I love it. I'm not attractive. 
bit. <laughs> well, we're out of beekeeper's heads. Is that bad? I mean, whoa. Okay. Anyway, okay. I did have to laugh. Come on, that's funny. That guy's funny. Um, yeah. Anyway, we walked to the corner deli where he bought me a vanilla ice cream and he grabbed the chocolate milk for himself. And then around 79th Street, we ran into Paul McCartney and his wife, Nancy. Oh. That was just bizarre. I never even met Paul. I never even been near him. There he was, Paul McCartney. Anyway, <laughs> gathered around, and it felt just like it used to, only it was sweeter. Somehow sweeter, of course. Paul waved goodbye. We headed back, and I could almost hear Jimmy Durante singing. Okay, here we go. Here's the song. <laughs> okay, <ready? laughs> I'm going to get the right key. Oh, it's a long, long way from May. your face. You can still feel hot water. C's candy peanut brittle is still your favorite dessert. The wild parrots on the wire outside your bathroom, and this is true by the way, in my neighborhood we have wild parrots. Do you believe that? People, I, I swear to God, it's the most amazing thing. People obviously had parrots for pets and they somehow got out and they joined together and they gang up and they are wild parrots all the time. <laughs> this is a God's honest truth. Anyway, the wild parrots on the wire outside your bathroom still sing to you every morning, and just like them, you're still a live animal. So just be grateful for what you have, you big jerk. <laughs> That's what I say to myself, Chris, come on, man, enough, you're lucky. That said, it's still hard to wrap my mind around the fact that I'm a post-World War II demographic. I'm one of 76 million American children born between 1946 and 1964. That makes, and that's right, I'm a baby boomer. You said it. I'm a baby boomer. Matrix Corp. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to a baby boomer? I swear yeah. to God. Anyway, major corporate boards require us to resign at 65, yet 42% of us are delaying retirement. 25% of us claim we'll never retire, and all of us refuse to acknowledge our demise. You can be sure that Steven Spielberg sliced the loan and Rob Reiner at 66, Goldie Hawn, Bette Midler, Steve Martin, and Cher at 67, Joni Mitchell, Sam Shepard, and Robert De Niro at 69, David Geffen and Harrison Ford at 70, Paul McCartney at 71, Al Pacino at 73, Warren Beatty, Jack Nicholson, and Robert Redford at 77, and finally 78-year-old Woody Allen are not retiring. Yeah. They are not retiring. At 67, the Department of Social Security informed Diane Keaton that her retirement age was 66. <laughs> I tell myself not to feel bad because my life expectancy is 86, which means I have 19 more years of life. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to try my best to make the best of those 19 years. Yeah. So, for those of us who've been separated from reality by fame, being old is a great leveling experience. 
After all these years, I have finally come to the point where I actually recognize that my accomplishments mean diddly squat in the grand scheme of things. I know I'm in the preparation for the great end zone part of life. I just don't know, I don't know for sure, if I have the courage to make bold mistakes, go out in a blaze of glory,